Hello, this is Nadim Azar at PC Solutions Net, and I'll be your host for this video. So today I'll show you how to apply all the updates for drivers, firmware, and everything uh, on an HP ProLiant uh, DL360 server. Uh, pretty much every manufacturer out there has something similar to support pack, uh, that's what HP calls it. Uh, which is a bundle of firmware drivers and utilities that has been tested uh, to work together. Um, it, this minimizes any risk on the customer side. So we are going to go into Internet Explorer and browse to the HP website, which I happen to know is uh, hp.com slash support. And we will just drill down. We want to go to downloads, put in the model number, and in this case we have a DL360G7 server. And on their website we can choose the version of the operating system, in this case it's uh, 2008 R2 Windows, and we are going to as you can see, there are several different options that we can download uh, from. Uh, we have drivers, we have firmware. Uh, the firmware that we download from here may be uh, very new. That's not as tested um, uh, with the proper drivers and utilities and everything as uh, what is available in the support pack. So the support pack has firmware for all the devices that may be on the machine. So it, it, it covers firmware, drivers, and everything for majority of your devices. So we're going to go to support pack and in this case it's a three-part download and I believe we only need one of the parts um, there's an XML file uh, probably like a, um, a readme file or help and then part two I believe is the actual uh, software that has the firmware and everything built in uh, here we can see the details and that's what we need right here and I've already downloaded it so let's proceed with the installation I have some other firmware over here as well. Actually, in this case, we are trying to solve a specific problem. Um, the fans on this server are running uh, at peak RPM, and that is not um, very convenient as the server is really loud. And of course, uh, we don't want the fans running at peak. We want them to run according to the temperature that's been detected. So uh, we're going to apply the support pack first. And if that does not solve the problem, we will go further and apply some updated firmware that has not been fully tested yet, uh, which was uh, one of the options to download in the link earlier on the website. Uh, so we just go down here and we're just going to run it. And it's telling us uh, you know, the details. We're just going to extract it. And we will extract it. Let's just create a new folder and we'll just call it HP PSP. Uh, I didn't see it extracting, so let me select that and hit OK, and now it's extracting. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, 215 megabytes in size, so it's, um, it's a pretty good size um, bundle of software. Uh, it should have pretty much all the uh, firmwares for all the devices, like CD, uh, network interface controllers, uh, chipset, uh, motherboard, backplanes, uh, SCSI controllers, all that uh, it should have it uh, along with the drivers and uh, this will be a minimal risk and uh, as a matter of fact I'm doing this via remote session the uh, servers at a data center so um, it's, uh, it's also a production server so um, I am confident that uh, we can apply this without any major issues uh, because this uh, support pack has been tested. Uh, if it was just the firmware, I would probably plan to go on site to apply the firmware if it hasn't been tested as well uh, by HP or, or HP partners like uh, PC Solutions Net. So the software has been extracted and I'm going to close it out and we're going to go in here and see uh, that that are in the bundle and uh, as uh, I'm just showing you what all there is a bunch of image files as well uh, this actually 
plugs into server-side utilities as well so that uh, you get a nice GUI that will kind of walk you through. Uh, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to run the uh, setup uh, because this is just an individual server that I'm going to update. I don't have 200 servers. Um, so uh, this is the uh, Smart Update Manager. And uh, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to use the default where to check. Uh, I'm not going to check online and I'm going to say both software and firmware and let me just move this a little up on the screen here and we will start with inventory and this will actually go out and um, scan the machine and offer us uh, details and also uh, determine which software is applicable. Uh, of course, since this is a bundle of software, it's uh, it, it has probably drivers and firmware for components that do not exist in this server. So this is a good time for it to do an inventory and uh, determine what all needs to be applied here. Okay, so we have uh, 42 components found, uh, and that's the information about the server. So... Um, do I really want to view the contents? No, I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And now this is what all it found. Uh, smart Array Controllers, um, uh, Registry Update for Windows, uh, Network Controllers, a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all. I'm not going to select stuff that is not needed uh, so I'm only going to choose uh, stuff that it's offering here. Um, basically, it will determine what, what you need and what you don't. So uh, I think everything there is good. Uh, these things are already up to date. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose this, and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and reboot if needed. And the reboot options, reboot delay, I'm just going to say five seconds and we are ready to proceed. Here goes. And of course this is going to take longer than the inventory took and um, just a matter of waiting and uh, letting it do its thing. Uh, as you can see it's giving us a little time there but um, at this point just a matter of letting it do its thing and then reboot. Once it reboots uh, we should have um, all the latest uh, firmware and drivers and everything should be good. Now if this does not solve my problem of uh, uh, the uh, fans running real high RPM then we will go a step further and download a specific firmware uh, for the chipset that controls the fans. Uh, maybe there is a, an update that uh, fixes this specific problem. So now the update has done, and uh, just uh, be forewarned that it takes a while for the update to happen. So if you're doing it remotely, um, don't panic if the server is offline for about 10-15 minutes because it actually reboots, um, so it's not running your uh, primary operating system. Uh, it applies all the firmware updates and then it restarts and boots into the primary operating system. Uh, so the server has restarted and uh, we are going to uh, go in and run the setup again just to verify that all the components are up to date now. Um, uh, so it's just going to inventory the system again and see if, it, if there's any more updates available, uh, which there should not be because uh, we just applied it. So let's see what happens. And there we go. Same 42 components found as last time. We're just going to say OK and look at the list. And 
everything is up to date over here. Uh, if you recall, uh, last time there were a bunch of components that needed to be updated, but now they're all up to date uh, except the WBEM provider for Windows 2003-2008. That's for Insight Management, which we do not use on this uh, server anyway. So, so we're good to go. Uh, that concludes uh, how to quickly and easily uh, and safely update uh, firmware and drivers on um, uh, HP servers in this case, but it's a, a similar uh, for other uh, brand of servers, uh, IBM or Dell. Um, so it's a very similar process. Um, so in this case, uh, everything is good to go, and we are going to close out. Uh, as we, uh, with any major update, uh, you, you, of course, there is some risk. We're just minimizing the risk. Um, not necessarily eliminating it. So depending on your environment, there may be some driver or some component that may cause issues. So uh, you need to plan for that and you know just just a, a best practice, uh, but this gives you an idea of how it's done.